Hello, my name is Alice Henderson, and I will try to explain how we try to detect peritones in a prosodically annotated corpus of English for academic purposes. We wanted to see if we could automatically detect peritones. In 1983, Brown and Yule defined peritones as structural units of spoken discourse which take the form of speech paragraphs, adding that the most consistent peritone final marker is the long pause, normally exceeding one second. This image is a screenshot giving a basic example of the annotated files, with the best candidate for the signal at the end of the peritone. At the bottom you see the transcription, in the next level up you see letters which indicate the pitch. On the left you see the sequence BBB, the bottom 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 sequence, which represents the final boundary. And then on the right, on the word today in yellow, you see the initial pitch reset, TL or top low which is a good candidate for an initial boundary. There's also a potential variant with M, medium, which is the speaker breathing in the pause. The table here shows the most frequent final sequences and initial pitch reset sequences for a male and a female speaker. These are the results from our supervised clustering, in other words, the results from corpus portions that we had annotated. Here is another way to visualize the most frequent initial sequences in graphics created by Taylor Arnold. For our candidates for a boundary initial position in peritones, we figured out the probability of encountering them by realigning all of the peritones to begin at zero and then plotting the sequences. This is known as the probability density. Looking at each pattern, noticeable differences appear. On the left, DTL and TLS have feature higher relative likelihoods to occur halfway through peritones, while on the right, MTL and TTL have higher relative likelihoods towards the beginning of peritones. TTL in particular seem to be more likely to occur exclusively initially. And here is one way to visualize the duration of the peritones. In the box plot, the bold horizontal line is at about 20 milliseconds, which represents the median duration. So half of the peritones are below 20 seconds. These are the results from our unsupervised clustering. In other words, these are the results we would expect to get by mapping the candidates over all the annotated recordings. This table shows the distribution of our candidates. To conclude, the main takeaways are, for endings, the identified candidates are basically BBB and variants. And for beginnings, the identified candidates are variants of TLS, with potential breathing in M just before. And finally, as it says on the slide, interperitone breaks were shorter than expected. We'd like to acknowledge the tremendous help of Taylor Arnold with clustering and data visualization, as well as the generosity of Corley for the grant used to fund the prosodic annotation. Thank you very much for listening.